Hello there, and welcome to another episode of the Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute is your daily podcast where we analyze, we scrutinize, and we celebrate a different Star Wars movie every time. In this case, Solo, a Star Wars story. Uh, I'm Alex Robinson from alexrobinson.fun. I am Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw, comedian, writer, podcaster, and wet bar enthusiast. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for closing out the week with no, us, Joseph. Oh, this right. has been a great week. Uh, everybody, the uh, I don't know if you you can tell, but the Jedi behind me uh, have become more engaged over the week. They're really mm. interested. Uh, they're very curious about the Beatles, so they were happy that that came up. They're oh. really engaged. What about the droid attack on the Wookiees? Hmm. What about the droid attack on the Wookiees? Perhaps <laughs> one of the best experimental them? Beatles songs? Mm -hmm. I mean, I really like that it's mostly just noises. <laughs> <clears throat> It's, you know, it's not always, uh, you're not going to listen to it every time, but when you really dig no. into it, it's definitely, yeah. it's got some but good it, stuff there. It really breaks up the White Album, so I think yeah. it's a, it's one of my faves. <clears throat> uh, well, we're talking about Minute 65 of Solo, a Star Wars story today. Mm -hmm. uh, minute 65 starts off with the Robot L3 announcing that she's calculated the course to Kessel. And it ends a minute later with Chewie making his move on the hollow chessboard. Move on. <laughs> <clears throat> move on dot org. <laughs> um, I have a question, and yes. maybe the, maybe there's an answer to this in your we solo a Star questions. Wars story visual guide. Um, happy to get it out. Does L three three seven have to stay tethered to the Millennium Falcon there in order to execute mm. those calculations? Because she like plugs in, she jacks into the side there, mm. and seems to me like that. You know, Chewie obviously, I, as far as we know, Chewie never has to plug in. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, we'll see what the old visual dictionary has to say. I think the idea is that she is doing the work that the nav computer would do. And later in the film, she becomes permanently jacked in. Right. I'm assuming that's the case. But but does she like for is it just because this is a tricky. Like a new route that she's plotting that she has to like if they're just going to the store, she doesn't have to jack in and, and do it like that. That's already pre-programmed, but it's like. For for establishing new routes like this, like like the whole reason why Lando and L three are part of this, he's a good pilot. She's got the best navigational database. They're taking advantage of that. Is that why she's got to jack in there to kind of feed this complicated calculation to the Falcon, or is it, or is it every time? I I don't, I don't know if uh, if uh, Alex found a technical answer, but I like the idea. Like, yeah, no, this is not just like a straight shot to. You know, uh, Mustafar. I don't know why you'd want to go there. Um, straight but... shot to Mustafar. <laughs> straight shot to Mustafar. Great Beastie Boys song. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, I I like the idea that it's like, yeah, everybody everybody knows the general route, but you have to calculate it, and this one's a little bit more precise. And this is what they're getting in this deal is people who know how to get there. Right. Yeah, I feel like the the Falcon must have some kind of at least simple nav a computer, and that she's kind of like the. It's almost like you know putting in the the better. Uh, it's like the upgrade right. system. Yeah, so for routine stuff, you could just use the nav. You know, well charted routes. You know, right. she doesn't need to be involved in that. But if it's something special, then you gotta switching from like the built in navigation thing in the car to Google yeah. Maps on your phone. Exactly. Yeah, because there are, there are like three minds in the nav computer. Uh, she's yeah. the third, so there's already two going. Oh right, right. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah. Do you think we'll ever learn the origin of those other two, of the, how those other two robots got condemned to spend eternity <laughs> flying around in a uh, in a spaceship? Let's wait for issue two of mm. Han Solo oh, yeah. and Stepdad Oven <laughs> and find out. <clears throat> Stepdad Oven. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, so Han Solo seems um, like kind of uh, naive when it comes to hyperspace travel. He's like, "What are you doing? Like, what's so right?" What, what are you guys? How do you fly a ship? What that flashing was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do like that. There are these beats where, uh, where they're not doing any of the heavy-handed. It's the same line, you know, it, yeah. and it's not. It it it's not an attitude. But there's a lot of similarities between Han and Luke, right? Like Han's in this scene, got. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah, in this whole area of Han's got the like, why do we need Lando? I I can get a yeah. ship. I can, I'm not such a bad pilot huh. myself. He's got that energy without the direct quote. Yeah, and then uh. You know, this is like, this is the crap that Luke gives him in A New Hope in order yeah. to get the exposition of how <coughs> hyperspace works there. Yeah. Right. That, like, what? what's so hard? You just punch in some buttons and you go, yeah. right? And like, <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. 
uh they should totally there should be a scene where uh, han solo in star wars is like this kid's he's doing the same thing i did to lando his kids kids <laughs> after my ship <laughs> well That's i mean I, I, yeah it's, it's just a well-built thing that han has that soft spot for uh young people taking their first step into the galaxy right Aww, like yeah. like han is he doesn't want to be it but he's a great big brother right and like he, yeah kind of warms to luke he kind of warms to ray well i i, well, I want to talk about that shot later where he's just losing it at how off, awesome hyperspace is uh-huh. and then you put that right next to the look he gives ray when she's kind of losing it overseeing the green of taco donna hmm, and right. just like that yeah i've been there <laughs> <laughs> i know what that's like when you had a crappy childhood and never left home yeah i like that yeah recurring and yet his relationship with his own child strained mm. and uh, murderous so <laughs> strained uh, and murderous. just, just strained goes to show you <laughs> not great not great uh, <laughs> the message of star wars strained and talk murderous. to your child yeah uh, yeah so one of the things Han, uh, lando says is i don't know what word he says but it sounds an awful like like the psychotic cluster <laughs> could that really be what it says uh, I believe it's the Sakata cluster within uh after John uh, Sakata. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Uh mm, this what I <laughs> oh, I got a, uh, oh excuse me. I <clears throat> ate some rough pasta I have a Sakata cluster. Uh yeah. You have what doctors call a Sakata cluster. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't look it up on WebMD. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it just says you're, if you have a cough, you might also have a cicada cluster, and it could be nothing, or you might die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cicada, 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 cicada. Um, the cicada cluster. It? Spell it. S i apostrophe. Oh, of course. K l a a t a. Cicada. Like like clatu, but clata. Right. It's an oh, area yeah. in hut space near the Tyon hegemony and the Cesar mm. run. Yeah, Cesar contain run. the Kintan system as well as the worlds of Klaatuin, where mm-hmm. Klaatu comes from. So there you go. This uh, is definitely a John Travolta sounding <clears throat> word, right? Siklat, <laughs> Tasla, Vodran, and Vontor. <clears throat> Are you just saying random words now? <laughs> <laughs> I think he snapped. <laughs> um, Tasla, Tasla was a planet. That's all that says. That's all we know canonically. Um. Vodran, Vodran. Wait, what, um, what are these things you're mentioning? Why well, are you just saying? Because th- these are all in the Sakata cluster. These planets. Oh, these are in the Sakata cluster. Got it. Okay. Vodran is the original planet where the garbage-eating Dianoga evolved. Oh, hmm. hmm. It's a garbage planet. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, but I think Sakata like is just like an area outside of the actual main Kessel Run part. Then the Maelstrom is the is the Kessel Run itself. Hmm. I, the 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 Ciclata, Cic, Ciclata, the Ciclata Custer cluster, mm, the Ciclata, Ciclata cluster custard, um, uh. the Ciclata cluster. <laughs> Does is, the Falcon have a Sunday bar? You think that would be a good, uh, a good oh, yeah. thing? Oh um, yeah, yeah. It definitely grown up in in uh, Minnesota. I've definitely <laughs> been to some buffets that have the Ciclata cluster. <laughs> it was. Let's see. Uh. Wait, where's the... No, that's Legends. Oh, I was in Legends. Sorry. Oh, you're oh. wasting our time. No, no, no. That was canon. That was canon. Oh, no, that was Legends. Oh. <laughs> um, I keep slip-flapping back and forth. You need, like, really good navigational charts to get between those oh. two tabs. Here here we go. Now, check this out. <laughs> what you got? Cicladic C- Cluster was originally created <laughs> for the 1995 Legends role-playing supplement Galaxy Guide 12, Aliens, Enemies, and Allies from West End Games. Uh, but it became canon uh, when it was introduced in the 2017 book Join the Resistance by Ben Acker and Ben mm. Blacker. Oh, there you go. Former guests of the show. So <clears throat> um, that's all. Those, the, I think that's the same book where uh, the Duns Thaxton was introduced and uh, oh. and Lund Gorley or whatever their planet is called. Hmm. Um, I'm also interested in Cuffs, the Ghost Moon, which is <laughs> which is also here apparently. Oh, that's also from Join the Resistance. It's oh, Christian boy. Slater. It's Christian Slater. Yeah, the Christian planet. Slater planet. <laughs> <laughs> Slater. <laughs> um. Anyway, the Ciclata Cluster. Uh, so Han, then Lando, once they get done- Is he like Cluster Ciclata? What? 
Uh, once they get finished on talking about hyperspace, uh, Lando says, you might want to buckle up, baby. Yeah, mm. I, don't, I, I guess it makes... I'm okay with that. I can think of two other examples of baby being in Star Wars. Uh, oh, oh. You want to you wanna hear is me, it baby? Is Luke and Leia being born? <laughs> well, it's yeah. a hear me, hear me, baby, hold together. Oh, okay, Han Solo yeah. says to the Falcon, and then okay. Obi Wan says to Aunt Peru, "Would you like to buy a baby?" At the end of <laughs> at the end of Rise of, at the end of Revenge of the Sith. So, of course, uh, <laughs> I, I had never realized this perfectly logical thing that uh, Obi Wan needs a little bit of cash to start his life I, there. Yeah. Right. So he charges <laughs> mm -hmm. for Luke. I had yeah. my eye on this hovel over there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but prices are skyrocketing on Tatooine. Uh, Doesn't look like first from here, but when you turn around, it's actually a big lake behind it. <laughs> Yeah. First four episodes of the Obi Wan show are just going to be him <laughs> going by the real estate agent trying to find a good uh, a good hermit mm -hmm. hole. Yeah, oh, I love Haggling. the idea. Yeah. It would be like an HGTV yeah. kind of show. It's like oh, it's totally. Like, yeah, it's just like a home improvement of being like, well, what yeah. we've done here is like we've we've installed a kitchen island and. <laughs> Yeah, Rhodey and I for the Jedi guy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I do like the... Uh, I like earlier when uh, when L3 is saying everything that uh, that she needs to do and plug it in and whacking herself in the head with a great oldie time Yeah, Oh, yeah, we didn't, I didn't even talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I love... It, it's just like... It, if you if you cast Dick Van Dyke in 1962 to be a robot who is flying a spaceship, like <laughs> he would do that bit, right? Hit his head to make himself work right. So, yeah, I, I like that. Uh and the, the when Lando says, "Whatever you say, my lady," that's like most Renfest Lando for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With the my lady, <laughs> my lady, <laughs> or uh, neckbeard nerd too. They love right, that that's true, Yeah, <laughs> my lady. He, he's too suave for that, though. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it's pure suave. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do. I, I I really do like their partnership here, their relationship, and uh, I guess this is where we first get their active relationship versus like because when we first meet he's like oh it's my first mate you know she's always doing this and it's a little more yeah. antagonistic up until now this is like okay but when they see why they, go to, work, they go to work and they're, they're yeah they got yeah. their system down yeah system and they do that little it's not a catchphrase exactly they do little like finger guns at each other or like a little right. salute, a little nod salute like, thing. Yeah, like, they do the then, two finger salute thing yeah. yeah and then and then activate the levers together hmm yeah, which I I think a lot of this scene is like it's 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 so Han seeing everything that he's been saying this whole movie like I can have these things and everybody's like no you can't you idiot right uh, and then this whole scene is him kind of seeing like Lando's different than him but similar enough and he's got this partnership and the levers and you know and and I feel like the whole buckle up baby is Lando like totally like reasserting himself right of like. Okay, sure. You you saw one of these on the gra ground. Your dad built it, yeah. but you don't know anything about hyperspace. So, yeah. right. sit back, child, and watch <laughs> yeah. me and my lady go to work. <laughs> yeah, pre like a minute or two, he was calling him kid. Now he's baby. He's totally like <laughs> infantilizing <laughs> yeah. this guy. Go in the back, embryo. Yeah, <laughs> go change your diapers, baby. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> Try to hang on to your object permanence, little guy. <laughs> Ah, uh, what? Who said that? My eyes can't focus past two feet in front of me. <laughs> um, I do like the idea that now that Han would go back and cry at the chess table and Kira would have to go put a little cloak on him and be like, what's wrong? And be like, they said I was, I didn't belong up there and I was sad. That's they where you got want the idea. This ship so much. <laughs> Oh, and also you you might want to buckle up. I, it's not quite a direct callback, but we could use that as a flashback when he says, go strap yourselves in. I'm going to make the jump. That would oh, be yeah. the... And we get to you see. You would see Han thinking of that right before he told them to strap themselves in. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Has that ever bothered you to just have like straight up uh, seat belts in Star Wars? <laughs> I guess it bothers me that they don't have them more frequently. Right. Like, it seems like something everyone should have. Like, even in this case, there two times we've been told to strap yourselves in because we're about to jump to light speed. And this one, he doesn't, they don't even like go back in their seat. It's, it's like less than you'd see someone in a plane taking off. You know, on a right. plane right. taking off, everyone goes, gets pushed back in their seat <laughs> a little bit. And these guys are just totally not, uh, not, not feeling anything. So you got good uh, shock absorbers on the Falcon at the stage, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's I think it was like a real graceful takeoff, right? That, uh, that L3. Yeah. You don't even setup. notice it's so smooth. Um, mm. yeah. You think they applauded? They're like, yeah, this minute to me seals like the thing they're doing to promote galaxy's edge. That's what it felt like to mm. me where they're like, let's all sit here and, and watch it go. That was <laughs> such a, like a, you know, don't forget to stop by the star cruiser. Book your... right. 
Anyway. Um, yeah. I uh, don't remember much of uh, the Millennium Falcon ride at Galaxy's Edge because I had my eyes closed for a lot of it because I was terrified. Hmm. Oh, so, e- emotion sickness or like... Just, yeah, like like not being able to... Or ghosts. Um, yeah, ghosts. The, all the people that have been killed in Disneyland over the years. I saw them all. No, um... um you have a Sith just, sense. Yeah. It's not that... It's it's not... I wouldn't call it motion sickness, but it's just like, oh, I can't... I Like, I can't disconnect the... Like, I actually feel like I'm falling through and zapping through all this stuff. Right. Like, I can't disconnect. Like, I kind of know that I'm on a ride, but I can't fully not feel like it. So I'm just going to sit here and put my head down on the engineer's station. Yeah. I, the one time I was on it, I was the uh, the weapons person, which mm. I thought, oh, this is going to be great. But then it's that weird design where you have to, like, look to the side. Yeah. <clears throat> and your little side screen. And like, but I want to look at the big screen. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to be I a pilot next time. So opposite I can... where I was like, let me sit back here in this little, is there a little closet <laughs> that I can hide in or something? Is there a You're the communications <laughs> officer who faces yeah. the back of the, of the right, ship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I go strap myself in in the back? I would like to do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, they yeah, really should add the gunner's positions like they should add like little other like additional seats to go with that, so that gravity yeah. well thing would get too too yeah. confusing yeah oh yeah and you could you yeah can you put the drop of coaxium in <laughs> oh, yeah. I have to do that whole thing <laughs> yeah all sorts of fun stuff um it, the, the, uh, the the shot of han yeah it, it does look like a lot of promotional stuff that they've used for things where you get to engage right mm-hmm. of yeah. feel feel the wonder uh but man it worked this is one of my favorite shots in the movie it just it so works for me because it's just like this is everything han wants and people tell him he can't have mm-hmm. in the way the camera just spins around and he's just like staring in fascination you know I, it, for me it just kind of really goes back to some of those roots of george lucas wanting to tell racing in space adventures and just that yeah the fun for freedom like it's got that like open road vibe <laughs> right <laughs> like, you know yeah yeah totally um so uh, anything else in the cockpit before we move back to the uh to the to the what do you call it, the lounge what what's that room called in the uh the main mm. room in the falcon the living the family room? room the family right, room. Yeah. The, rump, the rumpus room <laughs> <laughs> the rumpus room <laughs> the fun and games lounge yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you guys were growing up what how did you just did you, what did you have a fan what did, how did you describe your central like we just called it i think the tv room or the playroom even maybe mm. yeah we i we just never had that many rooms it, like the only communal space with the living room and yeah. the various places we l- lived we'd be lucky to have a dining room <laughs> right. but you just called so it the it living just, room not the den the living room. or the not the or the yeah it was always room. the living room like yeah. i yeah it took me a while to realize that you know uh dens weren't made up i was like that's a fantasy right. thing from tv shows right and like my parents would be like no other people have money and their houses have more rooms so they yeah. need more names animals live in dens you think they would be <laughs> less special than if they're uh what about you pete what do you have a uh do you have a family room a uh <clears throat> no same deal it's a living room living room living, living room, room dining room kind of extended room combo you know right um no tv room but so no one had a tv room the living room was the tv room. yeah but yeah. no one referred to it that way yeah well we question, i so. did have a um well it, there was an extra room for a little while that would go around that i had to you know, I had a, a kind of playroom for a while when I was really little and then it evolved and then there was a kind of almost like a guest room that sometimes was a TV room. But uh, and then in a, when I was in my 20s, we uh, we lived in a giant loft in, in Brooklyn <clears throat> and, uh, you know, built everybody. We we had to build it out. We built out some rooms and there was a room that it was built out from the people before us that didn't have any windows and we never really, I think the people before us were using it as a dark room and we never figured out what to do with it. And somehow it became called the Thanksgiving Fiesta room. <laughs> and yet it never was really used for much. There was some, sometimes we had storage in there. One time we put an inflatable kiddie pool in there for a while and, and stuff like that, but it never like, didn't have like a permanent no solution. Thanksgiving and no Fiesta. No, no, no. We never the had only two things that there. never happened in the room were those two things. <laughs> well, a lot of things never happened in that room, but oh, okay. um, <clears throat> those two. Yeah. What else didn't happen in the room? Um, there was never any uh, uh, high stakes gambling going on in that room. Huh. It wasn't the Thanksgiving Fiesta emergency surgery room. <laughs> Anyway, so we're in the living room of the Falcon. Let's all agree to call it the living room. (laughs) Sure. Uh, The gaming lounge. And Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of gaming, we get uh, a callback to 
beloved moment from minute 58 of A New Hope, the Dejeric hollow chess uh, scene. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it, compare and contrast this scene versus the, the scene with this table in The Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. I feel it's like just a blip in Force Awakens, right? It's a blip, but I feel like it, not that it derails the movie, obviously, but it takes, it stops the movie for a second because it has nothing to do with anything. It's just he's leaning on the table and accidentally turns on the chess game. And yes, it's cool that they, they did exactly, like they picked it up exactly from where it left off. And there's a whole behind the scenes thing that makes it cool, but it's not, has nothing to do with, had nothing to do with anything. It is stopping the movie to do this, like, hey, look at this, you know? Um, which I don't like versus this, they just cut back to them playing chess and something that eventually, you know, Chewbacca likes to play this game. And so it, it's within his character and all this other stuff. So like, it's a good, like it works really well here. It would work better if it didn't happen in the force awakens. Yeah. But, I mean, I think anytime you, you go back to something special, it starts to make it more regular and in risks diminishing it. I think in, in force awakens, it's, it's still a character beat because it's Finn being uncomfortable and not knowing where to put himself, right? Like not getting the reference. But, but that would have uh, maybe been a stronger character moment <laughs> <laughs> if we weren't distracted by the the thing that you like. Um, I like it, I like this scene because it is absolutely it is immediately about character, right? In this even this little bit that we get, it is about <clears throat> uh, Beckett who is apparently not just counseling people when he needs them on a job, but has like a frustrated motivational speaker that he is, <laughs> everybody he interacts with in this film, he's like, now I got a lesson for you. He is just like, he has constant turning yeah. the chair around backwards and sitting down and right. let's wrap. I've got some advice. Like <laughs> he doesn't need to be talking to Chewie like that. Like, do you want to make that move? Like it's, it, well, it's, I, yeah. I it's we... totally Beckett character stuff. And then establishing that Chewie's got, Either either he's already a fan because he's been alive for 190 years at this point. Either he already loves yeah. uh, this, or there's like, cool. I haven't played this one. I'm into it. Right. Um. Yeah. I um. I I feel like uh Beckett is kind of like uh, he's into self improvement because remember his whole thing is he wants to retire <laughs> so he can learn the vowel chord. So he's definitely yeah. someone who's always mm -hmm. like pushing himself to improve. So <laughs> I like that uh, consistency. Um, the, the other thing with the Finn thing, I feel like also why it might leave more of a bad taste in your mouth is I feel like it comes as part of a one, two punch of he lifts up the seeker ball and then he, I might be misremembering it. Those things might happen at different times. There are different times in it, but that but also it does lend to the, the like, way. we have to see it, Yeah. I mean, for me, the, the, they go by in a, in a blip, yeah. but I know for other people, they, they really take them out of the movie. So like, yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's something to be cautious about in the future of, yeah, everything you've associated with is still here. Like, yeah, yeah. right. Um, th so I do agree. This is a superior scene because it is a character thing. You're learning about Beckett, and we know established that Chewbacca is a uh, Dejeric player. The thing that does <laughs> bug me about it is, and this has to be intentional. It's literally the exact same move that Chewbacca does in A New Hope. He sends he sends his uh, Kinton Strider. It's Kinton Strider jumps forward two spaces and it ends on a cliffhanger. But we're about to see um, uh, Beckett's uh, Mantellian Savrip <laughs> come and uh, who are from Ord Mantell, by the way. Hmm. A little well, call go. back there. Uh -huh. um, so that's what bugs me about is that's that's literal. And I it's are we supposed to be showing that Chewbacca doesn't learn that he's making he's basically making the same dumb move here that he does ten years later when he's playing R two D two. I mean, but he learn but then he learns by the time of Rise of Skywalker because he is beating uh, Finn and Poe every time. Hmm. Mm. So at least so by then he's gotten better <laughs> at it. So he's just a he's, slow learner. Or they're just he's not finally as figured good. out. It's basically yeah. like he's got uh, he's got a set of. Uh, skills. He's got a set of. He's learned enough that he can beat <laughs> amateurs left and right all day. But anybody who's played a little bit more can easily eclipse his level of expertise. So he's got like a, like a a very like slightly above amateur. Like he's read a book, one book yeah. about Dejaric strategy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he's read Dejaric for Wookies, and and he he got it, and he's got like his one or two moves that he does, and that's it, and that's enough to beat. 
you know, casual see, so. people who have never played before, but people who might have spent some time doing this or droids who are programmed with all the possibilities obviously mm. can easily get around it. Yeah, I relate to this because I play it. Uh, <clears throat> I like playing tabletop board games. I don't get to do it all the time. The part of my personality that is overly direct comes out with tabletop games. And like, mm. okay, like, it's like, you know, I sit down with friends and they they tell me the rules or they read me the rules and they'd be like, okay, your little robot guy wants to collect the, you know, the gold chits. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll just start doing that. And, and then everybody knows like, that's actually the goal, but that's not actually the way you do it. Don't go, go at it in a direct way. Go about it in a roundabout way and collect the cloud coins first. And like, there's like a real way to win. Uh, uh -huh. And I relate to Chewbacca. I'm just like, uh, direct. Blunt, <laughs> okay. blunt, blunt instrument approach yeah. to the, right. uh, like, to the game. Chewbacca's like, good old yeah. rock. Nothing beats rock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just, I just want, I, I want to take that guy down. Like, okay, but that's just, you're leaving yourself entirely open. Yeah. This is a game of strategy and you're just knocking out the first guy you can because you can. Like, yeah. Uh, I learned while researching this minute, I learned something I'd never uh, learned before. And um, it, I assumed that this, that Dejeric was like chess where like we see the, we're, you know, we see. Uh, in in Star in A New Hope, we saw R 2s guy pick up Chewie's guy, Chew guy and throw him on the ground, Arr! and then he's dead. So I thought it was like chess, where like once a player, once a piece hits another piece, it's out. But apparently, it's more closer to like hero clicks or other <laughs> tabletop <laughs> games because each uh, on the Wikipedia, you can see someone has come up with like stats for all the how many hit points they have, what their armor class is, and all that stuff like that. So. Huh. I, I imagine maybe that was part of like a role playing game. It, that seems like it could be part of a role playing game supplement oh, where they're like, oh, right, like, like we, if you want to play your own game of Dejeric, here's at the almost like the, uh, like the Han Solo card Han game Solo thing you're talking game, yeah. about. It'd be great if they had lost the rights to Dejeric too. So they had to release this. Like you could have one of these in your home for like, you know, $2,000, but it's called the <laughs> Chewbacca, Chewbacca Warhammer game. <laughs> <laughs> Chewbacca I miniatures think, game. Yeah. I guess Chewbacca plays it the most of everyone we see, so it would be yeah. his yeah. game. So, I guess uh, so. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I always assume chess too. I guess maybe because of the hollow chest uh, being a term for it. Yeah. Uh, a name for it. But I love the idea that that our Star Wars characters are like totally D and D Warhammer level <laughs> nerding out. Like, yeah, totally. Before we can play, we got to mod them. So put a different, <laughs> you know, jacket on the Kenton Strider. Yeah, they're buying and multiple like, boosters I, so they can find the elusive piece. Right. They're like, oh, I finally got. I had to buy seventeen boosters, but I finally got that one piece I wanted. They want yeah, deleted so. scene with Beckett going Thacko. See, now that's how you play the game. <laughs> Uh yeah so uh now I well I like to I always like to Jarek but now that now that it's even now dirtier than it was like it I'm more, I'm yeah. I'm even more uh more into it yeah so, I always uh, liked it it I became deeply enamored of it I think it was around 2001 uh when they put out the Dejeric Challenge Chewbacca action figure mm. uh that comes with the table is and then the his arms set? prefolded yeah, like I have yeah, that so there's same like one <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love action figures like that's is that an action figure like sure his <laughs> knees can bend but like <laughs> it's a you can use him when he when he's been captured by the Imperials too. Oh, yeah, I guess so. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, or what? I don't know. <clears throat> what else do you do this doing? He's Macarena Chewy, maybe. Sit up, applying deodorant. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Or having yeah. deodorant applied to. Him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you Chuck, do you think uh, Wookies wear deodorant? Hmm. No. Or is it like Ooh. a herbal? Is it like an herbal paste that they put on in there for no. or something? No, there's the a there's a great passage in the novelization of Solo that establishes that Lando has all of these great like uh, bed and bath and body products, all these gels and lotions. That makes sense in in the shower, and he visits the shower after Chewie's used it, and it's the the sink is clogged with hair, uh -huh. and Chewie has just coated himself in all of Lando's various <laughs> lotions and fluids. This is in the Solo novelization. <laughs> Yeah. So wow. Chewie takes two showers in the in the novelization. What's with this no, guy? He, he, it's a, it's the same shower, but he's just like I'm gonna use all of Lando's fine hair care. No, but I mean, he took a shower earlier. in the other ship. He was. Oh, in the you're right. It's ship. in the other shower. You're right. It's the other shower. You're right. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Wait so. a minute. No, maybe there is. You know, this is he does take shoot. You're right. He does take two showers because this is specifically Lando being upset about it. Wow, I, that's crazy. Want to read it now to see if there's a third shower in there because it feels like they, <laughs> you're setting it up. Rule of thirds. Yeah. Yeah. I it's like it's... Luke's final lesson about why the Jedi shouldn't exist anymore. We just have to imagine. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> We've never seen Chewbacca on like a rainy planet, right? Like with his no. fur all. I Min guess Ban the closest is Minban. Yeah. Uh, Minban, he's muddy. Uh, yeah. Snow on Hoth, but yeah. never. Yeah, never yeah we don't see him post snow. <clears throat> yeah. You want Give Chewbacca on the snow Naboo. theory? <laughs> I do want. Uh, or Dagobah, <laughs> yeah. for that like, matter. Or Dagobah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, full rain. Yeah. Or Camino. Yeah. Chewbacca on Camino. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wet Wookiee, Wookie, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wookiee's Guide to Camino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just says don't. <clears throat> uh, well, anything else from it to number 65? Unless you guys, uh, yes, anything else you want to say? It. Or Joseph, <laughs> is there anything you want to say about the movie in general, since this is your last crack at the bat, so to speak? Oh, yeah. Anything you want yeah. us to look out for? Yeah, any you know, other scenes that you're like, oh, I wish I had had that minute where uh, Anthony Daniels plays a Wookiee. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that existed, right? He does. Uh, well, good yeah, news. He, he plays is, the Wookiee right? later in the movie. <clears throat> he, no, he plays. He plays Tack. Isn't he a, a Wookie? human guy? No. Really? Uh, he's he's buddies with the Wookies. Huh? But he's I just there was a, a, well, a human guy. Well, well, hmm. we have we'll time. Get we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. So look for yeah, look for uh, Anthony Daniels being either a, a Wookiee or a human guy. Maybe he does play a Wookiee too, but he certainly plays a uh, a human guy. Huh. Hmm. And at one point, he's like, "Come on!" to one of the Wookies. Maybe he plays both, and uh, when he plays Tack, it's a clone. It's like, no, the Tack, <laughs> of, tack the of the clone. Tack of the clones. Yeah. Tack is the clone. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, give yourself a treat. <clears throat> Google Tack Star Wars. Look on Wikipedia, uh, and it looks like uh, Anthony Daniels C three PO is has been cast in like a stage production of uh, a, a Dickens play. Like <laughs> Great Expectations. <laughs> I'm looking at the it's Visual a... Dictionary. You are not wrong. He does. Well, I mean, it, in that he in that the actor looks like uh, like he's playing Fagin. Hmm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, you you already uh, covered uh, what my favorite bit in uh, in Solo, which is I absolutely love uh lulilo primak uh the upside down frog in a jar right. singer oh the green, a, the green head guy yeah, yeah he he was in the uh one of the trailers and no idea what his name was so i called him vat weirdo right and he's just like <laughs> it's one of my fun games with the trailers of like the you know it's usually a bunch of action and all that and then there's like some weirdo and you get to pick your favorite weirdo <laughs> and i was just like the scene he was in with the upside down jar and the mesh i was like i want him to be like a deep baritone crooner. I want him to be like Bing Crosby. And like, it was one of the few times like exactly what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Did they ever make a toy? Did they ever make a toy of that, of, of the gr- of the gold girl and the, no? And no, Lililo uh, Primak in uh, Aridia Ventifoli. No, mm. there is not. It's not the good old days where they're, they'd make an action figure mm. of anything. Oh, so I'm, I think I'm waiting. They need to make like a see. Remember, they, they every once in a while they do like the box set of like all the imperial officers oh, around right. the table. They need to do like a singer's set. Oh, so yeah, like a, you get a size yeah. noodles. You get a um, uh, you get, what is it? Infra blue Z Bedley Collins or whatever from yeah. uh, Joe Yowza. <laughs> I'm not sure who the singer was from. Uh, yeah. Do you think we'll ever see a human singer in Star Wars? Well, we'll be like, oh, look, it's Ariana Grande, and here she comes in. And she's singing, like, will they ever do, like, a corporate synergy kind of, oh, here's Billy Ellis singing not. something? No. I hope not. No. Who was it who showed up in, uh, um, I'm forgetting the, uh, I can remember Star Wars names, but not real human names. Uh, the Gray? singer who showed up in Game of Thrones. Oh. Um, uh, Tony Bennett? Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I wish Ed Sheeran. Oh, Ed Sheeran. Sheeran. I wish yeah. Ed. <laughs> I wish Tony Bennett had shown up just slaughtering people. He's always right. really positive. I tried to read Tony Bennett's autobiography, and it was just like, and then that happened, and it was great, and then that <laughs> happened, and it was okay, but it yeah. got better. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. The Ed Sheeran. They're just like, well, the, these are some rough and tumble nights, and also Ed Sheeran. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, in sync, we're supposed to be in Attack of the Clones, no, so true. that was the, that was as close as we got for that one. As close as we got. Instead, we have wonderful upside down formaldehyde frog guy, yeah. Lily Lilo Primuck, and it makes me very happy. <laughs> well, we'll keep our eyes open for uh, certainly for Tony Daniels, and we'll cast our eyes back to watch. Um, what's the Tony guy's Bennett. name? Tony. No, Bennett. Uh, <laughs> Tony Bennett. Uh, Tony Bennett uh, <laughs> as a frog. I left my heart in Coco Town. <laughs> um. Well, Joseph, thank you for joining us all this weekend. Last minute plugs you want to get in before we wrap things up? 
Uh, yeah, no, just uh, check out uh, my website, josephscrimshaw.com. If you like Star Wars, check out uh, Four Center Pod. And if you like weird fantasy shows, I wrote for a, a show for Adult Swim that you can find on HBO Max called Tig Tone. So oh, check that out. I didn't know you were behind that. Uh, I was one of the writers on that. Yeah, oh. a very, very weird show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, yes, everyone should check that out. And, uh, we've hyped our Patreon here a lot on the show. You know, you can go to starwarsminute.com slash Patreon and, uh, you know, we mentioned bonus episodes, ad free and all that stuff, but I want to kind of shine the spotlight on some of our lesser known, uh, perks we have. For instance, uh, if you, if the, if you feel yeah. like it, you can pay enough where you can get to go to a sports ball game with Pete, it's true. uh, either, either in the greater Los Angeles area, or if their money's even better, he'll come to you. Right? right? Is that one of the things? <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, if those yeah, we, crazy... we haven't really re- reassessed those post pandemic, but I think it still works. That uh, yeah, yeah. There's a certain level where we'll, we'll go to a, uh, uh, a, a you know, it, originally it was a second shelf uh, New York team thing, but since I moved out here, it's a, you know, we can go to a Dodgers game or a, or a Clippers game or something like that. Um, How much to ride in that Jetmate bathtub <laughs> vehicle with you? I'm gonna. We'll see. I'm gonna pick one up, and then that'll add that to the Patreon levels. <coughs> if we that make it a, a Patreon perk, then I can write it off. So mm, nice, double. Yeah. Thanks, David. Uh, yeah. So go to StarWarsMinute.com/slash/Patreon. Make all of our dreams come true about getting a jet ski bathtub, and we will see you on Monday with another brand new, never before heard Star never Wars before. Minute. Never before.